Okay, so now a good question is, what determines the strength of the gravitational attraction? Okay, so what this paragraph talks about now is, so now you have a lump of clay with mass m, and um, the force of gravity is what? It's mg, but the acceleration of this object is g, right? We know that. The acceleration is g, the mass, and by the way, uh, they call this now, they start relating to the quantity of material called, they call it mass, and we'll get to that in, in just a minute. I know we've been talking about inertia all along, but we will, we, we're now going to talk, talk about mass. So we know that this, this mass m, this, uh, this lump of clay with mass m, well, they call it inertia m, but mass, okay, sorry, I'm confusing you. It has an acceleration of g, and the force is mg. But now, what if we have two of those, right? Two of those, m, m. The force now becomes 2m times g, right? So the force has now doubled, because the inertia has doubled, the mass has doubled. But g remains the same. Okay, so it says here, we conclude that Earth pulls twice as hard on the double lump as it does on either single lump. So here's, a, here's the statement. The gravitational pull exerted by Earth on an object is proportional to the object's mass. As you can see, uh, m gives us mg, 2m gives us 2mg. Okay, so the acceleration of a freely falling object near Earth's surface does not depend on the type of material, right? All objects, this is, maybe this is a counterintuitive, this is not so easy to understand, uh, but all objects near the Earth's surface, have the same acceleration in free fall. Okay? So, perhaps one way to, to understand this is, right, we know this, F equals mg. This is maybe more of a kind of intuitive understanding. We know that g is constant. So, g is F over m. Right? So, if, if g is constant and m increases, that means that the force of gravity increases. So these two are proportional. The inertia of an object and the force of gravity are proportional to each other. If m goes up, then the force of gravity goes up proportionally, and this means that g remains constant. Okay, now they speak about we need to consider now mass and inertia to be equal. Okay? And they say, uh, as we shall see in the next chapter, this equality between mass and inertia breaks down for motion at very high speeds. The mass of an object is equal to the object's inertia. Okay, so maybe you have a question now. What is the difference between mass and inertia? And I thought that the two answers in the forums... Okay, the, the forums on, uh, on the website. Uh, these two answers were good. There was one question. It was in the general discussion. General discussion. Okay. Uh, there was a question, what's the difference between inertia and mass? And Prof. Goldstein and Dr. Ruan gave two good answers. Uh, Prof. Goldstein said, mass relates to an object's gravitational interaction. Okay, so two objects that are uh, interacting gravitationally, okay, then we talk about mass. Whereas inertia relates to an object's resistance to changing its state of motion. So we had, say, a car uh, with a certain velocity and then it collides, right, with another car and it's motion changes. It has a delta V. So, 
In this case, we talk about its inertia, its re its the object's resistance to changing its motion. Whereas when two objects are gravitationally attracting uh, each other, we talk about mass. And so then Dr. Ruans um, spoke about uh, inertia mass and gravitational mass. It's the same concept. Uh, one is relevant to the coupling of gravity force. Okay, so so this one is to do with gravitational force, and this one, inertia mass, is related to all forces how an object resists acceleration. Okay, so I hope that helps. Okay, um, yes, the important thing is this: force is proportional to the mass. Gra gravity remains constant. Okay.